Whiskey Need is brought to you in part by Glenn Fittick and William Grant and Sons. Today, Glenn Fittick, the world's most awarded single malt scotch whiskey, challenges conventions once again as it reimagines celebrations across the world with Grant Crew. An exclusive expression that's been matured for 23 years and elegantly finished in rare French cuvee oak casks, it fuses together the finest flavors from Scotland and France to create a true taste of luxury to be enjoyed with others. Pick up a bottle of Glenn Fittick's award-winning single malt line today, almost anywhere. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to this week's episode of Whiskey Neat, spirited conversations with interesting people. I am your host, Christopher Hart. And, and man, does it feel good to be back in this room. I am sorry for those who have been watching religiously for the past two years, but I needed a quick break before the Whiskey Social this past weekend. And, and uh, I would say first off, but we've already begun, happy Valentine's Day for those watching. Uh, I realized that in the middle of this episode and realized that I've got some shopping to do before Friday. <laughs> um, this weekend was a blur. It was a, it was a fantastic blur. We've, we've either outgrown the event or we're going to have to utilize more of the grounds, get some, some luxury bathroom trailers, set up more tents. Uh, we, we've got plenty of ideas in store. Uh, the check-in process has been fixed. The food was fantastic. Uh, the bathroom line was an issue. We're working on it. We're working on it. I just want to say thank you guys, though, for those watching that traveled. We had people who traveled out of state, people who came from California. We had one couple that came from Alaska. Uh, several that came from Canada. It was pretty, it was just, it gives me the warm and fuzzies to put so much love into an event that has just become a madhouse of um, of fanaticism, of love for the spirit, and I just really want to thank you. So uh, this week's show is, as always, sponsored by our friends, Tolado Distel Artisan Spirits, leader in premium artisan products like Bunahaven, Deanston, Lechegg, Tobermory, Baines, Black Bottle, and of course, Scottish Leader. Before I continue, I do want to say something. I, uh, a good friend, state manager, Averin, Averin Edwards, uh, hooked me up with a bottle of Deanston that spent some time in a dragon's milk stout barrel. I don't have it with me today. We will be trying it next week. We might be trying it this weekend if I can convince a certain celebrity who's in town to come on the show. Uh, but I'm very, very excited to, to see what Deanston has in store, and we are working on convincing them to give us a special release for the show. So lots in store with Deanston. Uh, I definitely encourage you to go search Ralphie on YouTube and check out Deanston review videos. Ralphie is one of the best. So also, I picked up an Amroot single uh, or Amroot single malt whiskey cash strength bottling that I didn't know existed. I found it locally. And I could not be a bigger fan. Whiskey Need is supported by the inspired spirits at Glass Rev Imports and Amroot Distilleries. Amroot crafts one of the most award-winning Indian single malts to the exact same standards as scotch. Amroot Fusion also received the double gold blind and scored a jaw-dropping 96 points by judges at the Proof Awards. Amroot Single Malt Whiskey is widely available across America and can be found everywhere in Texas. Go out and get a bottle today. Please go to iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play or YouTube and rate and review the show. I don't know how you rate and review a show on YouTube. Find a way. Figure it out. Uh, or Facebook. Go, go, go rate and review the show. Give me your feedback. Um, it would be greatly appreciated. We have a couple things in store, which I can't talk about yet, but let's go into this week's episode. This week, episode 66, I sat down inside uh, Bell Mead Nelson Greenbrier Distillery with Chris Jones, and uh, we talked about Bell Mead and everything that they're working on. He's in town, just missed the Whiskey Social, and uh, we get to sit down again. Me and Chris, I consider him a longtime friend. We've been chatting for years. Uh, big fan of who he is, big fan of what he's doing, and big fan of the distillery. So this week we sit down. Todd joins us this week, and we sit down with Chris Jones, of course. Our last sponsor this week and our last episode that they are sponsoring is Brook Laddie. Progressive Hebridean Distillers since 1881. Our whiskey is 100% 
conceived, distilled, matured, and bottled only on Isla using 100% Scottish barley. Bottled naturally, unchill filtered, and coloring free, Brook Laddie offers a wide whiskey range, including the unpeated, crafted using local barley and hand selected cast to create a floral, elegant, and crisp flavor, the Port Charlotte heavily peated range, and of course, the Octomore, the most heavily peated of their whiskey range, is a powerful demonstration of the art that goes into distilling with unparalleled levels of peat. I am definitely getting back in, getting my sea legs back. This show has been great. I'm happy to be back. We have a lot of exciting guests coming over the next couple of months. I Oh, one last plug. Got to keep this in. I know you got a lot to trim out here, Jack, because I'm still trying to get back into things. I did an episode of uh, my friend's show, Mike G. I've talked about, I talked about him a few times on the show. Uh, there is a podcast called Show to V with Mike G. He's been doing this for almost 300 episodes, and his most recent episode that dropped the day before the Whiskey Social was an interview with myself. I don't get to vent a lot about personal things that happen in my life, and I sat down with him, and we drank whiskey and mezcal, and a lot came out that probably shouldn't have. So we talk about something that happened this past year when I found out a man I thought was my father was not my father, uh, which is crazy. Uh, but we go into it in the episode. So I encourage you to check that episode out. Show to V with Mike G. And if you don't know what how to spell that, show to V, D-E-V-I-E, two words, with Mike G. Uh, it's on iTunes and podcast. You can Google it. You, you can find it everywhere. Uh, but we had a great, great sit-down discussion with someone that I thoroughly enjoy. We talk about movies. He's a huge Kubrick fan. He's a huge Scorsese fan. We talked the conversations me and Jack have had about directors. I think I think they're in that episode. So it's an interesting discussion for sure. Um, yeah. Without further ado, thanks for thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching the show. Thanks for coming to the Whiskey Social. Thanks for being uh, supportive. Cheers. <laughs> Chris, buddy. How you doing? Very good seeing you, man. Great seeing you. Todd, welcome back. It's uh, the first episode of Whiskey Neat right after the Whiskey Social. This is our first time in two years that we took a little bit of a break. Uh, two weeks. Two weeks. So I, I, I noticed that you guys stayed true. Let, we had a lot of listeners go back and listen to old episodes just to kind of... That makes me think, I'm going to be a little sentimental here... That there is a part of your daily routine uh, on Fridays that you watch this show. And when we took a break, you still needed to watch the show. So I appreciate that. My ego appreciates that. And it definitely feels like uh, feels good to be back. I was burnt out for sure. We had so much. Todd, this was your first year actually yeah. working the Whiskey Social. Uh, you've, you've come as guests. But what what'd you think? Exhausting, but you know, super well organized. I mean, the whole team there. You know, everyone had the walkie-talkies in their ears. Yeah, whatever you call those things. Those so earpieces sucked. The, we'll the, be the moment those something next went year, wrong, yeah. yeah, they were a little uh, glitchy. But the moment something went wrong, it was fixed. There were staff coming, so organized chaos, I would say. But um, everybody had a great time, and I'm still exhausted now. I did have a uh, a couple things I wanted to, to mention and thank uh, Eric Bogle from. Uh, Houston Watch Company. He handled the Pat Finn Winkle class. He did a fantastic job. Sazerac, funny story about Sazerac. So every year for the past couple of years, our event is one of the only events that Buffalo Trace participates in. Uh, but under the condition that nothing highly allocated is at their table. They don't want to deal with it. We don't want to deal with the blowback. We don't want to deal with the complaints. We don't want to deal with uh, Anyone thinking that we donated this product to the event because I actually buy that product, the the Wella Foolproof Picks, the old the, old, the Blantons, you know, I bought all those from local selections and then donated it to their table to kind of you know to kind of entice people in to try some cool stuff. This year they were like, we'll 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 pour it. Sure, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> well, long lines. Long lines. Uh, we had quite a few people who couldn't. I guess they kind of spaced out the bottles. There were some people who couldn't find it at certain times of the night, and uh, there was definitely one guy that was furious. Uh, kind of, it was just they were we, they learned their lesson, so they won't be serving those at their table again. But I appreciate Sazrak and Michelle Solomon, who used to work with the Whiskey Social a long time ago. The Citadel, uh, they did a great job. 
very flexible, very easy to work with. And, uh, man, we've got some ideas around the bathroom situation for next year. But this is the first year we saw over a 65% growth at the event this year, uh, nearly 1,700 people, and 77% of those were not in the Houston Bourbon Society. And, and you know, I, I mentioned that all night to the HBS people, and they're shocked because yeah. they, they always assume it's an HBS event. The, and there's a few people on Instagram that tag the event as the Houston Bourbon Society through their yeah. annual Houston event. Yeah. No, I think there's some there's there's always, there's always a lot of assumptions around that, but I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Does that mean that we have a lot of supporters in HBS or that we had a base before HBS? Uh, I would like to assume the latter. 33% of the female, uh, sorry, 33% of the guests were female. That's that's up from 20% that's last huge, year. That's a huge number. Uh, so 13% were female, and the average <coughs> guest age was 38 years old. A lot of old farts. So Money. It, yeah, money. <laughs> uh, so it was a fantastic event. We, we sold out, legitimately sold out. Uh, not to throw shade at anyone else, but there's this thing that happens in this industry from a marketing point where you want to say it's a sold-out event, even when it's not sold that event uh and we lit we might have <laughs> oversold <laughs> a little what, bit what about so, on the vendor side i saw some empty tables out there you know that's that's a funny situation so uh the way it works oh do we want to go down this path uh so we had a couple of vendors who paid for tables and and just didn't show which is better than the reverse of that which is we there are like for instance bell mead you guys have been with us for Four years, three four years, years, three four years. Guys have been around for a very long time. They're on it. Danielle Bennett, she's amazing. She's amazing. She's absolutely amazing. easy to work with. I call her on the phone. We have any? I mean, she's fantastic. So, Bell Mead, uh, anyone that's been with us a long time, it's kind of industry courtesy to kind of offer them first right of refusal for the following year. Well, the problem is the table fees go straight to the venue. They the venue plus food and everything else, you know, it's, it's cre- creeps up to this year was more than seventy thousand dollars just for that one night. So we just split it up amongst the vendors, and we give vendors the first right of refusal. Uh, the problem is, is the events in February, and a lot of people don't get their budgets till January. So they'll they'll claim a place until like in June. And for six months, we'll just wait till they mm-hmm. pay for it. And then we have a lot of last minute back outs for various reasons. Some people don't no longer, the person I was talking with doesn't work for that brand anymore. Um, the brand went in a different direction or gets kind of swallowed up by a big. There are a lot of cancels. There was, because it still seemed pretty full to me. It was still pretty full. We had, I think eight cancel last oh, wow. minute cancellations. And it was for various reasons, uh, which sucks. Cause then I've got to eat. I've got to eat that cost to the venue. Scroll, scroll the brand names across the screen. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, it's. I, I just think there's. A, I don't. I don't think it's intentionally malicious. I just think there's. Uh, I, I think there's a disconnect between the brands. I don't think. I don't think brands realize how it might inconvenience yeah. the organizer. If it's a budgeting thing, I mean, it, because the event used to be uh, uh, August, right? No, no, no. And see, a lot of people think that too. We one year, we, okay. one year we did it in July. Every yeah. other year, it's been I think that was February or March. Year. February or March. Okay. We did one in May one year, but it's always been the beginning of the year um, because it's hot in the summer. Mm-hmm. But we got kind of wedged in the middle. But uh, yeah, so we we had a couple who paid for the table and just didn't show, and then uh, which you know. Uh, we put water on, and then it looks like a water table, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> but four thousand bottles of water. I, I, I'm, I, fo- I sent Amazing. an email follow up to those brands. I think there might have again. I think there might have been a turnover thing where someone mm-hmm. no longer works for the brand. They've already paid for an event. I don't. I don't know how it works, but any insight? I'd be. I, you know. I just love the water table. Yeah. I mean, you can <laughs> never not have enough water at a whiskey event. We we had sixteen forty, and we we purchased four thousand bottles of water, and we I think we were out. Like yeah, you know, I, as I was helping to straighten them, and by the way, I was joking with like some of the people that were helping, um, when they would walk over and say, hey, can I help with that? I was like, yes, yeah, start turning all the labels so that they're facing forward. Because <laughs> you saw how many bottles there were, there were like hundreds, and they were yeah. like, are you serious? <laughs> but no, I was thinking like, what are we gonna do with these at the end of the night? Um, because you take them out of the case, I'm like, do we have like a wheelbarrow or something? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't remember cleaning up the water at the end no, of the night, so they must have went. That's all amazing. Especially yeah. since everyone kind of get, you know, gets a little bit of a buzz on, and towards when they leave to get in their Ubers, they're probably, probably grabbing some water there. Yeah, that's, there. that's a good thing. We did tell, uh, we, we which is crazy. So we've been at the same venue for three years. We never had a bathroom issue, but I really pushed leading up to the event, two things. Please eat and drink before the event 
during the event and after the event. Drink lots of water. That's a good connection. And utilize, they, were, they were drinking their water. And utilize the spit buckets mm -hmm. or dump buckets. Spit sounds disgusting. It's a fancy event. <laughs> uh, this this year, I think, and then I would also walk around with, like, we. I walked around with an old bottle of ginger brandy from 1914 mm. and just kind of poured some special vintage bottles to kind of, you know, make people's nights. The hostess with the mostess. Try, try. Yeah. And, uh, and I would tell them, all right, I'll pour you this, but you've got to gotta drink some water you know and then what happened was we had this insane line to the male bathroom For, apparently the female bathroom wasn't that bad but the men's line was absurd which is the opposite which and i guess it's so many men i mean like 33 percent women's a lot but still uh, two-thirds of them being men Oh yeah, the with line, like three stalls. The, yeah, so we've got a solution for that. Either yeah. we're going to expand and utilize more of the grounds next year. Uh, there was a we had a great the cigar tent went off. I wanted to thank Alan Denny as well from Galveston Island Cigar Galveston Island Cigar Company. You guys did a great job. Came through last minute because we had a last minute cigar cancellation. Stogies canceled on us. Uh, and by the way, didn't cancel on us. Didn't call me. Didn't let me know. Just didn't show. So thank you, uh, Alan Denny from the Galveston <laughs> Cigar Company. Um, yeah. So the uh, but I think what we'll do is there's also like these luxury bathroom trailers that we can use next year. Yeah, those are nice. Uh, they're super nice. We can put them outside. I don't want to do porta potties. People pay too much money to use a porta potty. Right. Uh, and uh, I think we can definitely increase that. But that makes me happy because we also I think we had um, less incidents of. Uh, I would say the word belligerent behavior. Uh, we there was a vendor last year who came back this year and said, like way better compared to last year, and I think that has to do with the food and the and the drink. So I think uh, man, it just it went off really well. I w wish you could have been here. I think this is the first year you've missed because you came, you were you were in person manning that table, but you've been kind of all over the place right now. I have been all over the place. It's been um, a lot of fun helping spread the whiskey <laughs> gospel, as I always say it, from Nelson's Greenbrier Distillery, but. Um, you know, obviously, Houston Whiskey Social is always on our list of events to attend, and and I'm sad I didn't get to be there in person because I always do have a lot of great conversations with, you know, supporters of the brand and just supporters of the the industry. You know, so well, we got to work with Tanya Vikos, um, I th and forgive me, I think that's how you pronounce it, V Y K O S, Greek, I think, but mm -hmm. uh, she's fantastic. Yeah. I, I love her to death. I couldn't be happier working with her. Uh, and the, the from what I hear, everything went off without a hitch. Little need a little more, bit more elbow room in the venue, but we're working on that. Um, but yeah, dude, it was just a, a blur, and so much a blur. I could definitely use a drink. So why don't we start with something? All right. Uh, I brought our barrel pick. Uh, Mr. Blonde from 2018. Mm -hmm. He said one of 25 barrels. One of 25 barrels. Uh, one of 20 that actually were outside the Nashville market. Oh, really? Yeah. So wow. One of 20. Okay. So w how about we start with, with what would you prefer to start with? We can end with this, a little treat? I think we should end with it because okay. I think that, you know, let's talk a little bit about the uh, our newest product that we uh, have available in Nashville, Tennessee. Sure. It's our uh, Greenbrier Tennessee Whiskey, which is a weeded Tennessee recipe, and it's the original mm -hmm. recipe from um, Charles Nelson. Um, it was last uh, sold in Tennessee back in 1909. So, um, tennis, we, Tennessee only uh, right Tennessee now? Went at, yeah, Tennessee only right now. Um, but we have plans to expand outside of Tennessee. Obviously, we're just making sure that we have enough inventory to, so when we go into those um, outer markets, we're able to supply the demand. Sure. Um, but it's 91 proof. Uh, we proofed it out at 91 um, in honor of Mr. Nelson because he passed away in actually 1891. So I'll get more into the story of the bottle. I tell you what, while you go ahead and pour, I'm gonna have a sip of this coffee here. I've been in bed for the last two days. <laughs> I feel the same way, even uh. now. It's been, you know, it, uh, I just had blood work done the week prior. Uh, I definitely need to start working out more. But uh, for, the, for, for, in my opinion, uh, oh, here, I'm going to do this. That was our dump bucket. Oh, there you bad. go. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that, was the, that was my yearly allotted exercise. Jack's laughing at me. He's all young and plays basketball and stuff. Screw you, Jack. God, yeah, I can't tell you how good it feels, back to, feels good to be back on the show. It smells fantastic. I love that label. I had this with uh, our friend Chris. Yeah, Chris Furtado. Uh, Chris Furtado, High West. Uh, High West. Brand Ambassador. Yeah, we he, did. He came to uh, Nashville um, the, the first week of October to help the um, um, our team You know, blitz the market. Um, obviously, when you roll out a, your flagship product, uh, you want to have all hands on deck and have as many professionals as you uh, as you can on hand to speak to the whiskey. And he did a great job, and obviously he's a – 
he's a true friend and a brother of of uh, of the company. Um, and um, yeah, I was really happy that he brought he brought it in and kind of shared a little bit of the the background uh, of this whiskey. But um, what's I'll, the uh, what was the price point on this? So it retails right now um, SRP for uh, twenty nine ninety nine. Oh wow! Nice. So um, very approachable. Very approachable. It's um, a few dollars higher than the category leader, um, but. Obviously, what's, what's the category? Oh, Jack Daniels. Yeah, Jack Daniels. But we're looking to go. I haven't heard that term before. Category leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah little you know, little lingo. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, but we um, we're looking to come in a little bit higher um, than I, I would say. You know, the category leader. So sure, say, you know, sure. You're, it sounds, that, it is, sounds is better a, than leading is, brand. Is that a way to avoid saying the brand? You, like, is, is that part of your training or just, I'm just curious. Oh, you know, uh, we, uh, <laughs> you <laughs> not know. to put you on the spot there. No, you know, it's just something that, you know, we respect all the brands within Tennessee whiskey because they oh, you definitely do. We remember I, when I went by and visited Jack Daniels, they had a, a, an original bottle of this mm-hmm. from the, I guess, early 1900s yeah. on their shelf. And I was like, what is this? And you were like, yeah. They, they, every, there's a lot of love in that Tennessee there is. market. Yeah, yeah, there is between us. I mean, obviously, we're um, we're trying to bring a lot of attention to the Tennessee whiskey, uh, you know, segment of the whiskey category, and um, you know, it's an honor that they have one of our bottles displayed. I mean, I think that's actually one of the um, uh, the finest bottles that I've ever seen of of Greenbrier Tennessee, the original Tennessee it, whiskey. It, you mean condition wise? Condition wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, looks, it looks really good. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you come to our distillery, and we have. You know, multiple bottles that are a little kind of you know uh, worn down over the years, but um, but we have some great you know original bottles on on site that you know when folks come to Nashville they have to take a look at. Um, even got a bottle from what you saw the it's a bottle of rye from like 1899, yeah, and it doesn't yeah. necessarily have a label on it, um, but it's dark as midnight. Yeah, you know? yeah. And funny story goes is you know Andy a few years back I noticed that. Uh, he had a Corvin, and a Corvin, you know, extracts usually used for wine sales mainly to extract air, uh, in the air yeah, through or you know, liquid through the cork, and you could preserve the bottle of wine when you're showing it, you know, day after day. So I got a kind of got a little uh, feeling that we were going to maybe use that to extract some of that whiskey, and unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. not the case. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, we're all still dying to know what that tastes like, but it's a beautiful bottle for sure. Oh man, I, I think uh, I would make it your mission to find a second bottle, so that <laughs> yeah. you can, you know, taste it. Yeah, because yeah. we, we opened uh, on Saturday the, the ginger brandy, and we also did uh, some Old Law Cabin from 1917, that um, was just so, you know, it, pre pre prohibition fireball. Pre prohibition, <laughs> yeah, pre prohibition, and just uh, just a piece of history oh, in the yeah. bottle. And that's what's so beautiful about this hobby is that. These are essentially time capsules mm-hmm. of they're capturing a moment in distillation time, and you come back to it. I mean, again, this was this twelve years old uh, two years ago now. Yep. Uh, and and when I open it, it reminds me of the of that that era. You know, that moment of when it dropped, the the excitement, the fervor. I remember um, you called me when it just released. And I, I was, was so proud. I was going to the airport. I was with Charlie Nelson in St. Louis, and you were like. Hey, can we get another one? This thing sold out way too. I that, immediately. That was the five minute sellout. That was in line for that. It was five minutes. Some of them were less gone. than five minutes. It caused a lot of headache with specs. Uh, it, it put one particular <laughs> specs employee in tears. Uh, but uh, we we which sucks. It sucks that you've got some people who can be really ugly. It was a great value at the time. It was sixty it's, bucks for oh, twelve years. You know? So that that was actually specs is smart. Amazing. It, it used to be, and when I joined the company, um, it was an everyday item, our single barrel uh, varietal, and it was nine years. And then the next year went to ten, and then we started looking at our aged inventory, and also just looking at what those were going for. We're like, hey, you know, maybe we need to back off a little bit on this. So yeah. that's what kind of. Um, created the idea of doing cash drink reserve, which we'll get to here shortly, but um, is a higher proof offering. Sure. Because as you know, all your listeners and most whiskey folks love, the, the higher the proof, the better. A little bit right? of heat, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's why, you know, we we uh, proofed out, you know, no, uh, Greenbrier Tennessee whiskey at, at 91 proof because, I mean, it plays well in cocktails because you actually can get a good sense of what that spirit tastes like through secondary ingredients. And not to mention that weeded recipe allows you to enjoy it on the rocks, neat, or however the hell you want it. Can you talk it. about the the mash bill? <clears throat> yeah, I, I mean, so it's um, high wheat, so it's about sixteen percent wheat okay. um, on the on the mash bill, and you know, uh, this is the original recipe, and, and Charlie and Andy through years of um, of research, uh, especially before opening up the distillery, went back and 
um, you know, finding old receipts through purchases of grains and, and old newspaper clippings and stories. They were able to work backwards and, um, and figure out the grain bill. So, um, you know, this, is the, this was the absolute goal of the distillery is to relaunch um, this, the legacy of Charles Nelson in this spirit. And we're doing everything we can um, in Nashville at this point to, before we go out, outside of Nashville, to become the spirit mm-hmm. of Nashville, yeah. really. What about the aging on it? I mean, are, are they um, we're trying to work up to that, or is it? do they know what the aging was on the product that was back yeah. then? I mean, so traditionally Tennessee whiskey is only aged about four years. That helps you remove the age statement from the back of the, mm-hmm. of the label. Um, you'll notice, if you, for all your listeners who may have made it to Nashville already, have a bottle in their possession. On the back, you know, it has um, a blend between uh, two and five years, I believe. And um, they're a, a majority of it's all five years. And it's our first barrels that went in cask. Mm-hmm. Um, we've added some of the younger stuff just to kind of um, work towards getting to that four-year mark. But So I would say by the time that um, we get outside of Tennessee and potentially to Texas, it'll all be four years and older. So that is our our um, your goal. Our goal. Basically. Yeah, and for those who haven't heard the story uh, of the Nelson Greenbrier Distillery, episode sixty-six. I just went and looked it up. Uh, we went and visited the distillery. We actually sat in your storehouse in, my, in the most magical spot yeah, in the yeah. whole the place. The smell was we amazing. We rolled out the leather couches for y'all. Yeah, know? we did, and uh, we sat down. Me and my brother Sean with you, and uh, and Andy, right? Uh, Andy wasn't there. It was, um, remember we had the camera guy who was helping us with oh, AJ. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's AJ. Right. So it was just me and Charlie. Right. And uh, we sat down and we heard the whole story. And if you haven't heard the story, uh, <laughs> I'll just give you a brief uh, tidbit that was amazing uh, that has stuck with me. But as the family migrated over here from Europe, uh, they would store all of their valuables on them, sew pockets into their jackets, their vests and store their gold, their watches, their money. And when the uh, when when someone went overboard, that all weighed him down. <laughs> and he is still, to this day, at the bottom of the Atlantic. So uh, it, crazy. it is a pretty interesting story, to say the least. I thought it was incredibly fascinating. We also got to, by the way, we stole one of your ideas. Hope you're okay with it. Uh, we gave one of our barrel pick barrels to mm-hmm. a local honeybee farmer. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so we're going to age some something in it after, but right now it's we have currently 53 gallons of local raw unfiltered honey sitting in an Elijah Craig barrel that we plan to... Oh, well, get the get the honey from it and throw some whiskey into it. We'll have to make some trades then. I got I had no idea what y'all what your honey was doing to the secondary market. That's going nuts. We talked yeah. about it after the fact, but uh, it was a distillery only release. You did yep. two barrels mm-hmm. and uh, both Is that it? It was only two barrels? It's only two casts for the oh, last wow. two releases and um and What I, was the retail on that? Uh 150. 150, right. 150. I 150 believe. bucks. Okay. Immediately tripled. Uh it, it went up higher than that. Yeah. At one point I saw a guy selling two bottles, one from each cask for $2,000. Yeah. yeah. And I immediately texted you. I was like, "What?" It, I had no idea because, first of all, it was it was amazing. It was delicious. Mm-hmm. We enjoyed. Uh, they had took taken uh, same thing. Gave uh, their barrels to a local honeybee farmer, True Bee Honey, and then put their whiskey back into the barrel and released Bell Mead Honey. It's fantastic. Super delicious. I haven't had it. I know some people who are pure of heart or pure purist or you know don't like that, but it was how, absolutely how brilliant. sweet is it? It's just subtle. It's yeah. it's, it's a, a natural, so there's no additives. It's all natural. That's what, like it's to what say. honey tastes like. It's I like mean, how, so like. you know, honey being sticky, it's not like you're dumping a regular barrel. What did, what did they do to the barrel? Are you allowed to talk about that? Was uh, it just, you know, was yeah, it so cleaned? We cleaned the base you know? layer, but yeah. through the time that honey sits sure. in those barrels, it seeps through the the, mm-hmm. the pores, the wood, yeah. and then we put a an older blend of whiskey in there and it basically draws the flavor profile onto that mm-hmm. blend and um and i got good it's a big news. success yeah yeah i have good news we will be um we're, we're coming up on march 7th so if you're in nashville tennessee on on march 7th we'll be um re-releasing um uh, our honey cask it'll be um like our distillery opens at 10 o'clock um, first come, first serve. Um, and Except for the two that you set aside for the hey, show here. Yeah, you know people, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, we, uh, but we've actually increased the production because, you know, we yeah. like to please. And um, we now, had a lot of the folks. Honey, what did the honey guy think of it? Uh, the, 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 the company? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they, they love us. True B? 
true bee because we actually sell their honey in our gift shop. So if you want to do a twofer, get a honey bottle and they go get some honey. Because the honey, by the way, is delicious on its own. I mean, I've had a couple of the, the barrel aged honey in, in bourbon barrels and it's awesome. Yeah. You, know, you know what you could get away with, which would continue to show some love on that relationship. There's a new trend in, in whiskey right now called bundling uh, where liquor stores are forcing uh, like if you want a bottle of this Blanton's, yeah. you have to buy these this four pack of other bottles. Hmm. And uh, we it's legal, yeah. totally legal. But yeah. if you wanted to buy a, you can force that twofer and say that it's 170 for one bottle of this and a bottle of the honey. A little copac. Yeah, yeah, a little copac. little yeah, copac, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because we're obviously really excited and it draws a lot of folks. And also just want to, on that same day, we're launching the uh, the Cooper's Club. Mar- March what now? March 7th. March 7th. It's always a Saturday. All right, um, all right, all right. And um, as I mentioned, we increase production, so there'll be more. But we're also going to be throwing an event um, to um, uh, basically unveil the Cooper's Club, which is our, our fan club, um, which is free. Um, so and we'll be continuing to build that out. But, you know, it's just a... Like I said, a twofer. Come for a whiskey or come for the honey cast release. Stick around for the party. So that's one thing we always like to do with our releases: is provide an experience for uh, for our supporters. Is there a difference in the whiskey going into it? Is it around the same age as, as before? Good yeah, question. That's a great question. Yeah, we we usually keep it um, above, um, you know, anywhere from above nine and to up. I mean, I've seen us put a fourteen year old barrel in there and mix it in. It's just really what our our uh, distilling team decides mm-hmm. as far as this is the perfect how, blend for this. How long do you leave it in there? Um, it depends on the time of year that it goes in because it's if it's because we don't have a temper controlled rick house. So if it's in the um, if it starts in the winter it's kinda goes takes a little bit longer. If it's you know, in the in the um, summertime it speeds up the process. So all these landed um, I think it was around like four to six months. I just don't want to speak as far as the Take exact. Notes. Sure. Well, yeah. I'm, that's what I'm doing is taking notes because we, we, I think we were expecting three or four months to put ours in, but yeah. I don't know if that was going to be long enough. But also we have a, you know, our, our mash bills is a high rye bourbon. So with Elijah Craig, there could be just a big difference in that. It's just whatever, you know, our team feels is the, sure. is the perfect time because those guys have the best, uh, you know, jobs in the in our at our company is yeah. tasting and tasting and tasting. So um, I used to be a part of those, but you know, with life keeping me on the road so much as the travel whiskey salesman, I just don't get a chance to partake in much anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys have been uh, known to have, God, like fifty SKUs. Like you guys are, that's one thing I've always loved about the brand is you guys love to experiment. We do. Uh, you love to really push. Uh, well, that's the art of craft, you know? Yeah. I mean, and we also worked our way up through, you know, started with our Bellamy Classic and then, you know, it's then started with the El Rosso Sherry Cast that won us best, spe- uh, best special barrel finish at the World Spirits Competition in 2015. We've been, that actually got the wheels turning as far as create creativity is concerned. Is there a new Sherry? Because I thought the Sherry was at one of the newer... Um, lines maybe i'm thinking of what was the latest that came out so we so we did a brandy cast finish brandy and that was one a part of the craftsman's cast collection that we um did for uh, it's a qu- part of the quarterly release program mm-hmm. that we do okay um so uh but Olorosa was the first and then the exo cognac cask and then the mumsy madeira cask but you know um you know we're going to put a heavier concentration on the tr- our traditional styles like cast drink reserve which you, you have a hold of right now and then obviously our classic small batch but we're going to continue to do these um, these cast finishes just on a, kind of a much of a smaller scale sure because of just the time it takes well and, and the, the, the capacity excitement. that we have yeah right that's now. that's the big one right there and you've seen it you know yeah. you've, you've seen our capacity and know that we're we're uh Breaking at the seams right now. So we covered this in episode 66, but uh, Todd had a question he wanted to ask you oh. about the horses on the front of the bottle. Okay. Oh. Now, you know that the horses uh, are actual real horses named after specific horses. Right? Correct, yeah. yeah. And what's the what's the one that's not the good one? Can I, the, can I say the, the, the good yeah, one, though, quick? I just like to introduce like the, sure. our, our prestigious horse on the right, Okay. Bonnie Scotland. Yep. Yes, Bonnie, beautiful name. What a great name. Beautiful yeah. name. Bonnie Scotland sired. What a classy, classy, classy name. name. Right. And pretty, the, <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Bonnie Scotland was the founder of the Northern Dance of Bloodline in the United States. Northern Dancer Bloodlines, one of four bloodlines that could be traced back to almost every horse that's won the Kentucky And Derby. she had raced, right, and and as compared to the other horse, which you know you're going to get to, which had never raced. Um, it was a racehorse, but it was not, right. you know, a championship not, he, horse. Right. Very good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, he had the um, genes, yeah. the special genes. Yeah, exactly. It, exactly. <laughs> special genes. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, this was an original label that was, you know, put out there, <laughs> 1878, and... Uh, 
we had we made some adjustments. Uh, <laughs> we took the names off the label. So when you look at the label, why would you take the names off the label? Because the horse on the left's name's Brown Dick. And oh, what? I call him Brown Richard. You know, yeah. and he is, yeah. he's a very prestigious horse. And you know, it's yes, on the I, label. I am a father of teenage kids, but I am sorry, I'm also t- ten yeah, years old. But yeah. you know, it's a fact, and that's a, it's a, it was a piece of art. We actually have it on display at the distillery, the original label. I've never seen it. I have to look that up. Here, I'll mm-hmm. show it to you before mm-hmm. we leave. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. So um, yummy, yummy, yummy. That's yeah. savory, savory, savory. Great yep. word. Um, so we're we're tasting cast drink reserve here now. Um, this is a, a seven barrel blend of single barrels. Um, which we, which is what I tried to sell him on. After this sold out in five minutes, I tried to convince him to give us a blend, but it was right in the midst mm-hmm. of this constellation marriage, and uh, we didn't make the cut just yet. But I'm still eager. To I push saw that on though the that, that that your blends are with a smaller amount of barrels. I saw some, something about three barrel blends also. Four barrel blends, seven yeah. barrel blends, um, which is super duper rare. Yeah. For those That's of you small. who don't know, and this is kind of some some bourbon one hundred and one, but small batch is not a regulated term, and there is no definition. So uh, I've I've heard people say things like small batch is, uh, you know, less than twenty barrels. No. Uh, Booker's releases are all, they all say small batch on them, I believe, and they are all 300 plus barrels. Uh, it's, it's, there is no standard for small batch. So when you have a producer who is doing three barrel, four barrel, seven barrel blends, that is extremely, uh, exceptionally rare. So yeah. that's off to you. By well, the way, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, this is batch uh, 27 of 2019. Um, it's capped at 113.6. And um, we found that that's basically our, our wheelhouse for this special blend. Um, and it's one thing about Cast Drink Reserve is from batch to batch, it's consistently delicious and savory to, to still words that from, from your mouth. But at the same time. Now we're even on the honey thing. Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah we yeah, are. Yeah. So it, uh, but from each batch, there's some different attributes that pop out that actually, if you have a, you know, with your palate, you can kind of, you know, um, see that. Wow, this is a little bit different than the last, but we want you know that kind of be our our, our standard, um, and I think that we've we've done a great job, um, you know, producing this this product, and it's um, you know one best. Let's we'll see, 2018 Whiskey Advocate named it in their top ten. It was number ten of 2018, and that was only a few months after we had released this product, and. It really that helped our brand as far as from a notoriety standpoint. And this really is also in there. like the nine to eleven year range, um, like seven to eleven. So, okay. Yeah, seven it kind of 11. varies. Okay. Um, it just you know our once again our distilling t- uh, team is just they they absolutely know how how to uh, identify the right barrels to marry together for this product. And you mentioned it's capped at one thirteen point six. Yes. So they're all one thirteen point six. Moving forward, his, like when we first launched, it was not. Uh, it was actually each batch varied in proof. Um, but we have found that um, it is, uh, it's been really tough as far as um, once a, basically they treat it like a single barrel every state does when registering with the mm-hmm. state is obviously you have to follow all standards. And um, it was just a lot of tedious back of the house work. So we decided to, um, you know, focus on 113.6 because that was the batch, batch number five that, um, that got that um, honor at being part of the Whiskey Advocates top 10. So um, that's kind of what we've moved forward with. Yeah, so, and for those who aren't aware, uh, for years, you actually, uh, the COLA approval, Certificate of Label approval with the TTB, uh, you had to submit new ones when the proof changed, and that has no longer, that's no longer uh, an issue. So you can essentially, uh, you don't have to submit for a new label each time at the federal level when proof changes, but there are still some states that are very very particular about it. I think uh, off the top of my head, talking to Will Shragus over at Barrel Bourbon, I think there's at least two or three that specifically need uh, the label to match the proof on the bottle. So um, it's not a problem in Texas, though. So uh, yeah, ours was like 104. So does that mean that you're, you're going to keep all batches that hot, that exact point? We're going to try. We're yeah. going to try because we feel like that is the, the perfect proof for this product um, at this time. Obviously, you know, as we evolve, there, that could change. You never want to say It's know, so specific. Save. What's yeah. the price point on this? Um, right now, you could find it anywhere from about, about sixty to seventy dollars. That's a great price point. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. All day. <clears throat> um, we uh, have you guys thought about 
Well, because I guess because it changes, but if uh, if it's a range, have you thought about adding that age statement from it, at least seven? Like Heaven Hill put that seven-year mark on there. Yeah, I, I think we're going to stay away from that. I mean, I don't know, honestly, just because, you know, that's a discussion that's with our team. And, and obviously now um, we're, you know, from a marketing standpoint, we want to – we always want to be up, up front with everything. And so I think that, you know, right now we're, we're fine the way that, that label reads sure. at this point. The uh – yeah, and, and for that 60, 60 buck price range. And going back to what we were talking about earlier, what Specs did here that kind of helped is we were expecting this to be $100, $90 mm-hmm. in that range. Mm-hmm. And uh, Specs was able to basically convince us that we couldn't go anywhere else with it ever again. <laughs> like it would have to be through them. I think 65 bucks is what we got that for. And uh, we couldn't have been happier with it. That's amazing. Because yeah. Considering what happened to 12 year MGP. Yeah. 12 year MGP. Not long anywhere after else. This. Yeah. Right. $175. I, hey, you know, but it's, it's great <laughs> juice. I yeah. mean, MGP is, has, uh, I mean, it's, they just produce really good mm-hmm. bourbon and whiskeys. So, how many batches are you doing a year of this? Um, so, this was, like I mentioned, batch 27 of last year. I would say, on average, in the past few years, we've done around like, around, 30 or, or maybe a little north, a little south of there, um, because it, it makes up a percentage of our overall volume. Um, our classic small batch is, is the horse that pulls the cart. It is our flagship. Sure. So a lot of focus goes on um, on that that uh, product. Um, this this is the second leading skew within the, the Bellmead portfolio, um, rightfully so. I mean, it quickly came onto the scene and, and surpassed the, mm-hmm. the cast finishes. Um, yeah. And, um, and I see that it can, will continue to gain a lot of popularity. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I call it just reserve, you know, probably calls it cash drink reserve and, sure. but I'm just like, you know, keep it reserve, you know, CSR, CSR. Exactly. Yeah. What's the proof on the finished bottles? Um, so our standard finished products are at 90.4 proof, okay. same as the classic small. So batch. has there been any thought in, in releasing those in a, a higher proof given the success of the cast strength? Yeah. Good point. Great question. Great question. Todd yeah. Grew. Look, Todd's you should through. have your own podcast, man. Uh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> Call we've it the backward hat show. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'll we turn around. That's the four square hat. <laughs> I, I like that. Oh man. I was so glad to have them there. Yeah. They're awesome. Yeah. So we've, um, we've actually sold, um, uh, some of the cast finishes at, at cash strength and it was part of our select cast program you and I have t- talked about it a couple times yeah. um, and you know it's very small production um, it's basically when we f- identify a, a cask that has a special blend in there and it is just over the top with flavor um, we hold that back and then um, have approached some you know customers in the past or some some states in the past as far as our wholesaler and we, per- we personalize it like we did something in Colorado and Minnesota, where we would personalize that bottle, send that in, and then they would go out selling it, um, mm-hmm. you know, which just through their distribution network. And um, and I always say those are some of my absolute favorites. Um, and um, the first one we ever did that gave us that idea was actually um, up in uh, D.C. At, at Jack Rose. Um, I love that place. Yeah, Bill Thomas. He's been a dear friend of Charlie and Annie and our entire business, and um, he he was the one who actually. Uh, got the first one and if you're ever up in dc and um that was a that was a heavy yield sure but if so if you're ever in dc go in and ask for the the jack rose uh sherry cask awesome. barrel um, it's a 10 year i believe have you guys done the done a rum finish we have not done a rum finish no and i don't know if that's in the cards you know andy nelson he's <laughs> <laughs> i know you're I know you're looking at me right well, now. Well, I mean, you guys have a, a wild success with sweetness. Mm-hmm. Uh, the sherry barrels, the uh, the the Malmsey, Just, the, I, I think uh, a rum would be a, a big hit with what you guys do. Yeah, I'm still detoxing, I will tell you so that, I'm going to dump it. So no offense. I know. No I, offense I'm, yeah, I, I'm the, I was on Bourbon Street all last all uh, last weekend. So I remember when I saw you on. Yeah, <laughs> we're outside of Aaron Rose. That's right. That's yeah. right. That was my first. Uh, you were with me. Yeah, I think we yeah, all. I, th- yeah. I think you met then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we, yeah. That was the uh, what's it called? Tales. Air, Tales. Tales of the yeah. cocktail. I yeah, ran you into you. Uh, I think we were all inebriated of at that moment. We were. Yeah, yeah. You're in New Orleans. We talked about Tales. We, not... we talked about the Dolph Lundgren episode, and uh, I've met your counterpart. Uh, what's her name? Oh, uh, Liz Espy or Danielle Cox. Was she a little? I think it was Danielle Cox. Yeah, like really kind of 
br- really kind of brunette. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, did you all sponsor an event there or, or did we just run into So that show? that year was we were just there. Okay. Um this year Crazy you know, as we got year. we're going to be uh Exhausting. doing some activation. Yeah. See, I was only there for a day and a half, so and that was my first tales experience. This year it's going to be if I can survive a week, Wednesday to Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, we'll, we'll be back for interviews, but it was a, <laughs> it was a exhausting. Just two days of, of interviews and mm-hmm. uh, it, late nights. Oh, yeah. crazy late nights. Well, if, when, when we get our plan uh, in place, I'll make sure to pass along what we'll be doing. Cool. And obviously, I know y'all are down there to do work, you know, but you know, depending gotta, on what gotta we Got to enjoy ourselves a little bit. And the whole reason why we went to Aaron Rose <coughs> is I heard that if you go there, you have to stop by Aaron Rose. Uh, we yeah. walked in. <clears throat> Couldn't breathe. Yeah. There were so many bodies packed in this bar and no air was moving. It's stagnant. And I, I could I literally felt like I was suffocating and uh, I came outside and of course you're I'm, outside. I was like, right. Oh awesome, man. Isn't so we that talked, like we, August or when when was that? July. It was July. July. Yeah, so so that's it's like the middle of July. Everything every year. was wet, man. I mean yeah. we I baby powder galore. But I uh <laughs> we talked about the the Dolph Lungen episode and, and kinda just I think we might have smoked a cigarette or something, but I never smoke cigarettes. That's one thing you do. Do you do it? What stays in New Orleans never, you know. Uh, it doesn't, what, what happens in New Orleans stays yeah, in New Orleans. Exactly, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we've got one more to get to our single barrel that we did a couple years ago. When Bond. let's people are going to give me a hard time if I don't ask. What is the has 2020's allocation been spoken for? How many barrels? How do we make it happen? Sure. So, I mean, obviously right now, I mean, we're going through a great By the way, you know, I love you. I also know that this question is a pain point for a lot of, oh, a lot, of yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, you know, I've been I've had the honor of like um, helping out with the barrel programs at, at uh, Nelson's Greenbrier Distillery for the last, you know, since I came on board, you know, you know, three or four years ago, and um, it's it's been exciting because there is such a demand for it, and sure, um, and because. You That's know, job security. It's well, there you go. But it's, <laughs> it's been a great uh, vehicle for us to build the brand, especially from the you know years ago. And um, but at this point, we have not been able to really deliver um, a quantity of barrels that we feel comfortable with. Because listen, we have a lot of great supporters and a lot of great markets, and it's tough when you have to go in and say, "All right, we're only going to give one barrel for one market." I mean. We, we, we're not like that, you know, we're a family business. And so we're focusing on building up our quantities of, of, of uh, aged inventory sure. to offer, to have a greater offer. So um, we're looking at this year, taking this year off. I know that's nothing what you wanna hear right now, but we need, to, um, we need to really kind of look at our focus is which is building our core items, but then also um, holding back some of those barrels that we come across that will be great um, opportunities for folks to purchase um, alongside also expanding our capacity. Sure. Because as we mentioned earlier, we have Bellamy Bourbon, which is is growing at a great clip, but now we have our flagship product, Nelson's Greenbrier Tennessee Whiskey, that is going to take a lot of our uh, time and attention from a production standpoint um, as we start to expand that. So um, what you know, folks don't understand is when you have, uh, under our current setup, you know, you are, you're, it's a lot of moving parts. And I've been so thankful to have a great staff um, at the distillery to actually uh, educate me on everything that goes into every part of the business. So I've, you know, I do sales and help with our marketing, but I don't do any of the hard work in the back. Sure. And so I think until we can get a l- much smoother That's process. That's an exact comparison to my marriage with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I work, but she does all the work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you you have a great wife at home, obviously. But I, I um, I, I just want to make sure that you know we are going to come back to the single barrel program. It's just this year is just going to be tough for us to to release any um, um, special projects. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of candy in that. A lot of bubble gum. So good. Yeah. Um. All right. So let me say this. <clears throat> totally understand. Mm-hmm. But it's again going back to a comparison with my wife. I had uh, friends introduce us via MySpace years ago, mm-hmm. and she kept rejecting, turning me down, not meeting up with me, canceling me to go on a date with someone else, right? Yeah. But I kept asking, so I stayed at the forefront of her, of her mind. Yeah. That's what I'm doing now. <laughs> so when the time comes and you're ready to go on a date with me, I've been with my wife 14 years. We have four beautiful kids. Yeah. When you're ready to have kids with me, I am ready when you are. 
See, that's I thought the analogy <laughs> yeah. you were going to go for is like we have a relationship here. I need I need some sugar. Like, no, oh, no. Yeah. Well, I'm a very hey, patient Valentine's man. Valentine's just around the corner. Too, <laughs> no, I just so. want to yeah. This comes out Valentine's it Day. Does. Happy hey. Valentine's Day, guys. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, it's Friday, right? It is Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should know that. Friday. I should know that. Oh, no. <laughs> if you didn't make a reservation, the way to get around it is to say, I'm cooking. And then you just got to go to the butcher. I'm not get cooking. Some stuff. Forget that. Yeah. I'd rather take the shame. Yeah. Just kidding. Just kidding. I'm taking my wife to a concert tomorrow night. We're, we're celebrating early. Nice. <laughs> nice. Hey, you know, wait, it's just wait, a, what concert? It's just a holiday. That means Dermot, Dermot something or other. Some guy named Dermot Kennedy. Dermot something. Something, something. Uh, it's something like that she likes. I, I just buy, made this bought, up. I just bought the tickets and and uh, and get to reap the benefits. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. So when you are ready, uh, I, I know we've uh, given you this whole spiel before, but we are the. Uh, there is something that happens that I don't think a lot of civilians get to see, which kind of part of this tough question is there's a side of this that consumers don't see that I'm happy to pull the curtain back and let them know. Great example is Whitmire's Distillery here in Houston. We begged them for a single barrel for here. They had never done one, never done one. Kept asking, kept asking. His number one concern, well, I'd like to give you one. I would. The problem is that I'm worried that if I gave you one, that I'm going to have all these buyers pissed off that I didn't offer them one first, the big supporters who've been supporting them for years, which makes total sense. So what we have done and what I as far as I know, we're the only one to do nationwide, is we work with all the big box stores as well. So we basically try to mend the bridge of, I can't give you one without giving specs one. Okay, well, we'll just do ours through specs. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a great working relationship with specs. Uh, if there, when the time comes, mm -hmm. and if there are specific requirements as to who you feel like you should go through, we work with them already. Hey. So whoever they are, we work with everyone. Specs has been a great partner for us since we came into Texas, you know, five years ago. And uh, obviously they've been awesome to work with. Um, and we'll, you know, uh, hopefully always have a great relationship with them. They, they, sure. they give you great placement. Now, you know, I've been through the Bourbon Isle enough times that I can I picture level. it. <laughs> yeah, it's right mm -hmm. there. Right Eye level. One yeah. of the first things you Eye see. Eye level, yeah. 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 They're, um, they're, they're, man, they built one hell of an empire. Like any moment... Any time I get remotely a bit proud of the Whiskey Social, like we had Jared Hempstead come in the green room. Jared Hempstead, Hempstead is the master distiller or, or head distiller at Balcones. I don't know that he would like the term master distiller. Distiller of the year. Just, but he, he, anytime I feel any kind of pride around the event and the community that I've contributed to, I look at someone like that and I'm like, I'm nothing. Like this guy built, the, these guys literally set the stage for Texas being a Texas whiskey state. I always thought rum would be a better fit for Texas, but him, Garrison Which Brothers, they've got these massive companies who are paying people's salaries and feeding their families. Like They couldn't be more family-oriented and more uh, uh, invested in their in the industry, whereas I throw a party one night a year. You know what I mean? Like It's completely different. Like What you guys are doing, Nelson Greenbrier brand, you guys are, uh, one, you were ahead of the curve. We talked about this in episode 66. You guys were playing around with finishes on a much larger, much wider scale before it, really anyone else. You guys were like, let's, let's see what we can come up with. You guys were progressive in that mindset. You, so much so that you had to reel it back. Like you've, you've been so overwhelmed in uh, what has become a really awesome, awesome brand. So my hat's off to you. How long have you been with the company? It's going my fourth selling season, as I always say. Ever, four ever, years, that's it? Four years, that's it. So when you came to the Whiskey Social for the first time, that was mm -hmm. your first year with the brand. Right. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, I, but I've been now in the wine So I'm business. responsible for your career. Hey, please. man, <laughs> you've helped, obviously. The friendship and, and relationship's been great. But just everything's been so great, man. I mean, to, to watch what's happened with Bell Mead the past couple of years has been astronomical. Yeah. Well, I mean, Tanya, we've, we've been on the uh, – We've beat the bricks, you know. I mean, you know, this is how this this company was uh, was uh, refounded by uh, the brothers. I mean, you know, Charlie and Andy have done such a good job, and and uh, they really are a true testament to uh, what hard work uh, is all about, and um, that feeds through the culture of our company um, in Nashville. And and you know, obviously, we want folks to understand and get a sense of our culture. So, you know, if anyone 
listening and would ever like to come down to Nashville and uh, make sure you come by Nelson's Greenbrier Distillery and we promise a good time. Uh, yeah, we've got quite a few listeners. We have listeners in all 50 states mm-hmm. and more than a dozen countries. So uh, I do. I will tell you, I make a trip to Nashville at least twice a year uh, for, for barrel selections. One of these years, uh-huh. it'll be at Bell Mead Distillery. Yeah, we'll be happy to host you. And uh, and then, of course, uh, we always make a trip to the motherland a couple few times. You just got back, right? You yeah. just did our t- first two dickle, uh, bur- bullet uh, barrels. Yes. Um, yeah, so we've run out of time. Todd, thank you for coming in. First, uh, thanks for the help with the Whiskey Social. Thank you guys for uh, coming, making this event the the most insane, largest event in the state. Uh, I really can't thank you enough. And, of course, tell me for the support. Hey, thanks for having me. Good seeing you, buddy. Appreciate it. Balcony's first ever year-round bourbon was an inspiration. It all had to work together. A blend of carefully selected ingredients, Texas-sized pot stills, and creative people determined to find the absolute best way to usher a new whiskey along. When you discover how it pairs with a meaningful moment, suddenly the feeling of drinking great whiskey becomes a whole lot more.